Welcome to 49ers Cal High Sports Report presented by U.S. Bank. Tonight, highlights from all around the Bay Area. In football, we have Menlo Atherton battling Bellarmine. Marin Catholic meets McClymans and Los Gatos takes on Leland. We have volleyball action with Carondelet and Monta Vista, water polo with Half Moon Bay and Saratoga, and the story of the Sarah football star and his crusade to fight teen suicide. It's all next on 49ers Cal High Sports Report. Welcome to 49ers Cal High Sports Report presented by U.S. Bank. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. We begin tonight in the East Bay with two teams playing in the West Alameda County League. The Alameda Hornets will be in the Shoreline Division. The Hornets picking up an impressive opening night win, scoring 48 points. That's right. The Berkeley Yellow Jackets will play in the Foothill Division. The Jackets scoring 49 points in their opening night win last week. Two 1-0 teams clashing on the island Friday night. The ground is rumbling as the Hornets from Alameda High School rush out to the field to take on the Berkeley Yellow Jackets Friday night. Start of the first quarter, it's pay drag lane with the pass to Daryl Brown and the catch is good for a Hornets first down, but later on the pass downfield and defense was really key in this game. This one is picked off by the Yellow Jackets, Emil David, who takes the ball downfield, finally tackled at the 20 yard line and that's a big play for Berkeley, but the Jackets would not score on that drive. Alameda on the doorstep now and it's Lane with the ball as he pushes his way just crossing the line for the touchdown and the Hornets take the lead. The Hornets decide to go for two with Lane handing it off to Christopher Couch who takes it into the end zone and the two point conversion is good, eight nothing Alameda. Second half now and the Yellow Jackets get the kickoff to the Hornets and it's Zayula Amadzawe who's breaking ankles left and right and takes it 25 yards, weaving in and out. He goes a terrific run back there is finally brought down with a big hit by Berkeley. Early in the fourth quarter now, Alameda threatening again. Lane back to pass, he sends it to Brown who takes it in 15 yards for the Hornets, second touchdown of the night. Shortly after, Alameda with the ball again, but the Yellow Jackets won't have it this time. Caleb Hapton, Purifoy into the backfield and a big time tackle for loss right there. Great defensive play. Fourth quarter action now, and Berkeley trying desperately to get back into the game. Carl Penny with the run here, but Berkeley would not score. Alameda pitches the shutout. 16 to nothing was the final. Lindbrook and Balboa meeting for the coin toss at midfield Friday night, each looking to take home their first win of the season. Halfway through the first Buccaneer QB, Brandon Arori finds Trevor Britton up the middle for the first score of the game. A missed PAT makes it 6 0 Balboa. And two minutes later, the Buccaneer offense is back on the field looking for more. Narori at the handoff to Anthony Nunez, and he sheds one tackle after another down the far sideline. And 48 yards later, Nunez finds the end zone. The two-point conversion good. Balboa up by 14. And looking for more, Narori gives the ball to Caden de Guzman. Some good blocking by his lineman there. Seven more for the Vikings in second half. The Bucks on the prowl. Narori looking around for an open man. Lobs it to the corner of the end zone. Andy Elde Aces keeps two feet in and holds on to it. An awesome grab by the sophomore. Seven minutes left in the third. Vikings looking for the long pass, but there to pick it off is Anthony South of Ville. He picks up a couple yards after the catch. The Bucks would score on the drive 33-0 Balboa. And a few minutes later, Lindbrook is putting together a nice drive. Jay Lee catches a pass, and this guy was doing good stuff for Lindbrook tonight on both sides of the line. But this one was Balboa all the way. Quarterback Narori. Tried to bust through the line, but finds a hole through the right side. A good game for Narori as Balboa wins it 47-0. The Bucks' first win since the 2016 season, and DeGuzman says things are looking up. Last season, we went undefeated in losses, and we didn't want that anymore. And we got new coaching staff, new transfers and everything, so we were hoping to win tonight, and which we did. Just plan to do the best that we can. Uh, plan to win league, obviously. We're all one, one team, one sound. No, but no individual athletes on this team. We're all together. That's how we win. Los Gatos Wildcats excited for this home match against Westmont. The Cats looking good early as Emily Goldra bumps to Adrena Tang. A nice set to Isabel Isaac who just crushes it. Cats up early. More Cats as Lizzie Armstrong gets it to Tang. This time a short set to middle blocker Sabrina Belquist. And that's not coming back. Westmont fighting back. Melissa Lamb sets the Warriors outstanding outside Melina Mayhood. 
but Molina went down in the second with a sprained ankle. That was bad news for Westmont. Late in the first, the Cats put it away. Skyler McKinnon to Tang, deep set to Isaac, and Los Gatos has a 25-16 first set win. In the second, the Warriors fighting back. Archery Pham to Lamb to Renee Martin, who splits the block for the kill, but the Cats in charge throughout. Picture perfect form on the block here by Tang as LG takes the second. Now in the third, Tang to Armstrong off the block for the kill, and Los Gatos goes to 2-0 and on the season with the straight sets win led by Armstrong and Isaac. Each week we present the players of the week in a rap produced by the hip hop department at the Rikus Center. That's right, the Rikus Center producing an original rap every week based on the previous week's games. Pretty nice. Here are this week's players of the week. Yeah. Cal High Sports, we back for another season. Introducing Leverage 80. Watch his talent overflow with Henry to Oto. No strings to hold him down, just like a Nokia. A gritty linebacker, certified spine cracker. Yeah. Ready to take out opponents and guilty bystander. Man, on the gridiron, every play he's bringing heat. For De La Salle and their 290 game winning streak. Leading the Spartans as they shook out Folsom. He's golden, got his tackle towels up like a motor. Yeah. It's a great idea to throw to Matt Schoenberger. Yes. Cause once he makes a catch, you know that he's going further. Look a out. senior receiver, full of Campo Lindo Cougars. Playing like they could be. Trophies on the mantle in the future. Eight catches for 222 masterful stats. Yeah. And he picked up most of his yards after the catch. Whoa. Scoring four touchdowns. He's more than clutch now. There's nothing left to discuss. He covers that much ground. Okay, I'm glad we have this time. Those are your players of the week. Stanford Healthcare brings us great information on sports-related injuries every week. Here's the 49ers head team physician, Dr. Tim McAdams, with this week's tip. The posterior cruciate ligament, or PCL, lies behind your ACL and is important to prevent the tibia from translating posterior on the femur. The PCL is much thicker and stronger than your ACL, so tears are not as common. When they do occur, you may have pain and swelling and a feeling of looseness in the knee, and this can initially be confused with an ACL injury. PCL injuries are usually grade one, a sprain, or grade two, a partial tear, both which are stable and usually heal fine with rest and bracing. Grade 3 PCL injuries are complete tears and often occur with other knee ligament injuries and may require surgical reconstruction. Physical therapy is an important part of the treatment of PCL injuries. Coming up, two of the best in the CCS meeting as Bellerin takes on Menlo Atherton. And later, Miramonte meets Hilldale as 49ers Cal High Sports Report continues. ready to buy a house, a mortgage from U.S. Bank could help make it possible. And a dedicated financial partner will be with you every step of the way. See about pre-qualifying today. U.S. Bank. The power of possible. Defender twice my size. Bring it. Down by two? I got this. I love this game as much as the pros. I may not play for the Warriors, but I have the same doctors. Teaming up to keep the pros and me at the top of our game. Here it is, the final summer clearance event this year. New cars for less. Why buy you? New 2018 Jeep Renegade starting at $13,888. New 2018 Jeep Compass for just $89 a month. Can you believe that? The remaining new 017 four-door Wranglers with $6,000 off the MSRP. New Cherokee starting at $16,888. All Jeeps are on sale. Over 500 available today. We're South County of Gilroy, your number one volume dealer in all of Northern California. We are back at Levi Stadium with a CCS contest with two teams expected to be amongst the section's best. The Menlo Atherton Bears made it to the Open Division playoffs last year, losing in the semifinal game. The Bears are looking to be just as strong this season. That's right. For the second year in a row, the Bears open up against Bellerman. The Bells won a tight contest last season on the way to the Open Division playoffs, where the Bells were beaten in the first round. Two of the best teams in the CCS going at it on opening night. It's our block construction blockbuster game for the CCS. Our Chiara Biagini was there. 
blockbuster game. Yeah. Welcome to San Jose City College as the Bells host the Bears. Both teams looking to start out their seasons on a high note. Last year, the Bells took this season opener in a thrilling fourth quarter comeback win. This year, the Bells will look to their 15 returning seniors to lead the team, including six foot, 160 pound QB, Harry Mingrown. Expect the Bears to come out hungry tonight. MA is returning their lead running back, Demarshawn Payton, who ran for nearly 900 yards with eight touchdowns last season. Two of the very best in CCS battling it out. It's our CCS block construction blockbuster game. The MA Bears show off their air game in the first quarter. QB Justin Anderson steps back and sends it flying. There to make the tough catch is Joey Olshausen. A few plays later, M.A. picks the ball up in the red zone. Anderson hands it to Patello Batsavei, and he breaks through the middle into the end zone to put the Bears on the board. M.A. looking solid on defense. Watch Joe Postauer fly in for the big-time tackle. Second quarter, the Bears looking to add to their lead before the half. Anderson takes this one himself. He dodges traffic and breaks to the far side. Touchdown, M.A. We're back from the half with M.A. leading 14-0. The Bears on the attack, but the Bells defensive back, Joey Liker, deflects the pass. Third quarter, the Bells looking to make some moves on offense. QB Harry Mingrone throws a long ball, and making the catch is Matthew Pinelli. But the next play, M.A. comes up with a huge defensive tackle. Malik Johnson gets the sack to give the M.A. Bears the ball back. M.A. takes advantage as Anderson connects with Olshausen, and he gets brought down at the 10-yard line. Next, Anderson finishes the drive off with a rushing TD, his second of the night. The Bears lead 21-0. M.A. seals the deal with five minutes left to play. Anderson showing great accuracy tonight. He throws a dart to Olshausen for the M.A. touchdown. The Bears with a big shutout win. Final score 28-0. We talked to junior quarterback Justin Anderson after the game. You know, we just came out here and we played. We played four quarters, smashed my football. Coaches prepared as well. Uh, they just they gave us what we needed, and we came out here and we executed. In San Jose with our blockbuster game, I'm Kiara Biagini, 49ers Cal High Sports Report. Two powerhouse teams battling out here in the first game of league play for both. Malia Jackson will rocket this serve over the net to give Amador five straight aces to start the match. And the Lady Dons don't hold back. Helen Zhao will set up Jackson again, 14-11 Amador Valley. Then later in the set, Sarah Reibel will cap this one off with this kill, giving Amador Valley the first set. We move ahead in the second set. Caitlin McFall with this block at the net to giving the Dons an early 4-2 lead. But Sadie Pete, the star in last week's Cal game against Arroyo, gets a block of her own as this one stays close in the second. Each team would go back and forth until Genevieve Bain and Juliana Bronzini with this block that extends the set for Cal. But it's Rival again with a rocket that lands just inbounds to give the Lady Dons the second set. The Lady Grizz claw back in the third. Sophia Aguilera giving Cal the 18-13 lead. And then it's Genevieve Bain on the service ace, and you can count the point as Cal takes the third. Moving ahead to the fourth set, Helen Zhao lobs it out to Sophia Moore for the kill to add to a team total of 52 kills on the night. And this match belonged to Amador Valley as Rival caps it off for her squad as the Lady Dons take home the W in their first game of the season with a three sets to one victory over California. Each week this season, the 49ers and South County Chrysler will bring us our Coach of the Week award. Each winning coach receives grant money for his school. We'll announce our first winner next week. Coming up, we head to San Lorenzo for Concord and Arroyo. But first, here's our Cupertino Electric Top 10 Volleyball Power Ranking for the preseason. The Rikus Center is well known as an elite athletic training facility, but you might not be aware of all the ways the center touches the lives of our community. In addition to athletic fitness, nature awareness, and creative arts, the Rikus Center offers a diverse community service program, allowing students to gain leadership and life skills, learning the responsibilities of a real work environment, from working with young children to helping veterans with archery. The community service program will teach students the demands of a professional environment while fulfilling their high school's community service service requirements. Goodwin's got it at the 30, breaks away, and there's the home run. Touchdown 49ers. We can see the talent on the field. What makes them love the game of football? Every time he catches the ball. Contagiously competitive. Those are the type of guys we want. Slices through the Giants, pressure to the 49ers. Yeah. What it takes. 49er touchdown. touchdown 49ers. 
what it takes to win championships. That drives me, that drives Kyle, that drives everybody on this team. High school sports builds character, builds communities, builds legacies. And Block Construction plays a big part in this, building state-of-the-art athletic facilities all around the Bay Area. With an unwavering commitment to teamwork, innovation, and quality workmanship, Block Construction places great value on dedication, performance, and successful outcomes. Block projects inspire excellence and are a place where memories and legacies are built. Block Construction. We care. We prepare. We perform. We're the Pittsburgh Pirates, and you're watching 49ers Cal High Sports Report. <laughs> Team captains meeting at midfield for this interleague matchup between Concord and Arroyo. Ryan Murphy leads off the Minutemen on offense, and he finds Brian Cruz over the middle and takes this one inside the 30. Very next play, Murphy out on the screen pass to Gabriel Perez, and that would be enough to score for Concord. With a minute left in the first, the Arroyo Dons will lock down on defense with the big man Carl Latchenmeyer penetrating the O-line for the sack that forces a three and out. But the Minutemen would come back with one of their own, but this time it's starting QB Ryan Murphy on defense coming in for the sack to force a turnover on downs. Into the second quarter, Concord inside the red zone. Murphy over the middle to Cruz to tack on six more as Concord leads it 13-0. And the Minutemen didn't stop there. Cruz again on the sweep handoff. He'll find his blockers and takes this one along the sideline. And he's gone for his second TD. But the Arroyo Dons kept fighting. Tom Raymond pitches this one to Eric Simpson, who goes deep with a nice spiral to Evan Ortega. And he brings it in to give Arroyo their first TD of this one. Moving ahead into the second half, the Dons are looking to go deep. But this one is picked off by Gabriel Perez. He'll take this one back to set up the Minuteman at midfield. First down, Concord. Next possession, Murphy gets a tough snap but recovers and rolls around outside the pocket for a wide open game. Valencia, he's at the 40, the 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Conquer. The Minutemen would continue the scoring all the way into the fourth quarter. The final score, 41 to 6, with Ryan Murphy leading the way, 246 yards. The Valley Christian Warriors getting pumped up to host Homestead in their season opener. The Mustangs were looking good early, though. Set one, Chanel Desmet bumps it to Stephanie Zhang, who sets up Paige Bensing for the kill. But back come the Warriors, Sante Stewart with a pass to Grace Brandau, and she sets it to Taylor Fleming, who smashes it home for the point. Valley Christian keeps the rally going. Stewart to Brandau, then right back to Stewart. She hits it off the wall for the kill. The Warriors take the first. The Warriors trying to keep the momentum going in the second, but check out this play from Indy Desmet, who gets a nice dig and the point as the Mustangs win the second, 25-17. Homestead keeps it going in the third. Bensing on the dig. Chanel Desmet on the set, and Sarah Olsen with the kill. The Mustangs take the third. To the fourth now, Homestead dominant early. Janie Zhang with a nice dig to Indy Desmet, who sets it over to Ben Singh and she smashes it home. The Mustangs just firing on all cylinders now. Zhang to Zhang to Indy Desmet for the big time kill. Homestead looking for more, but check out Nia Willis going way up for the big time block. That was impressive. But this one belongs to the Homestead Mustangs. Amanda Ruggiero to Zhang to Olsen for the finish as Homestead wins its first match of the season in four sets. Ben Singh leading the charge for the Mustangs with 24 kills. Each week, U.S. Bank brings us stories of athletes who have overcome adversity in their lives to become future leaders. Aubrey, our future leader tonight is Sarah quarterback Luke Botari. Luke was crushed last year when a great friend took her own life. The tragedy moved Luke to take action to try and stem the tide of teen suicide. With a clap, Luke Batari sets his team's play in motion. The starting quarterback for the Sarah Padres is a leader on and off the field. Luke led the Padres to a state title last season and is returning for his senior year. Last season coming just a few months after the suicide death of a former girlfriend, someone dear to his heart, a girl who was a big part of his life. The girl in my life when uh, we were growing up, she became my girlfriend. She was one of my big supporters at the time. She always pushed me and kept me on track, kept me focused, and she was just like a bright light of happiness. Luke says he's still hurting from the loss, playing last season with a heavy heart. I couldn't even describe to you what I was going through. 
just because I didn't I didn't even know what to feel. It was like sadness, anger, like what what could I have done like better? It was just all those mixed emotions. So Luke decided to do something about it. He wanted to make a change to find a way to keep other teens from suicide. The reason I started Play for Prevention is because first of all I wanted to honor her her memory by doing this nonprofit and doing all these events. But second of all, I didn't want I didn't want anyone to go and go out like that again. Luke talked with his coach who told him if you're going to do this, you should do it big. Let's make a big difference. I mean if his heart and soul is into it, you know, I thought maybe if we can galvanize, you know, not just his interests and his desires, but a lot of people around him, a lot of business people, then perhaps we can't just maybe not affect 10 people or 20 people or 30 people, maybe thousands of people across the country. Luke also got lots of help from his mom and he went to work. A website went up and during the season, Luke would talk at other schools, in classrooms and at games. It was a lot. Time management is huge for me. You know, I can't, I can't go off track by five minutes, either sending an email or meeting with someone or going to practice like I'm out here. I can't get off track with time management. So just staying on, like I have a schedule every day that I write down and I write down what I need to do every day. Luke is experienced at being a leader. Luke's goal is to have his nonprofit, Play for Prevention, be a leader in getting teens to talk to each other about suicide. The big purpose for my nonprofit is to save lives and impact people and release the stigma of suicide. That's, I mean, simply put, that's it. That's what we want to do. We don't want to see anyone go out like that. People react differently in tragedies like that. And, you know, some, some kids or families might clam up and go into a shell and and, and uh, which is which is a natural response, but Luke's reaction was the opposite. It was, what can I do to ensure that something like this would never happen again? Luke keeps promoting Play for Prevention, producing a public service announcement this past month. The pain from the death of his friend will never go away. What keeps Luke positive is knowing he might help another teen stay away from suicide. Even when it seems like you're alone, even if you are literally alone, you're not. There's always people that support you, whether it's your parents, your family, your cousins, your your friends, teammates. Every, there's there's someone that loves you out there and cares for you. And don't give up. You know, don't be afraid to talk to your friend about it because I know that they'll be there for you. So we helped Luke produce a PSA to get the word out about play for prevention. We'll show you that in just a little bit, but. Great uh, kudos to Luke for doing this. I know it meant a lot to him, but it's going to mean a lot to teenagers all over the Bay Area and all over the world. And for all of his work, Luke is actually our Be Human inspirational student athlete this week. Be Human is a new app celebrating inspiring people and events we see in our communities. Download the app, see Luke's story, and post and share thoughtful acts. Coming up, our South County Chrysler Game of the Week as Leland hosts Los Gatos. And later, it's San Benito and Terra Nova. You're watching 49ers Cal High Sports Report. I'm Luke Matari. I started Play for Prevention to help raise awareness about teen suicides and see what we can do to help suicides in the future. When I lost my good friend to suicide, it hit me hard. I thought we can all do more to keep this from happening again. I formed Play for Prevention and started talking to teens at games, at their schools, and through our website, playforp.org. Our goal is to bring a voice to the stigma of teen suicide to everyone involved and to have a resource for open discussion, ultimate support, and friendship. For more information and to see how you can help, go to our website at playforp.org. The Cordovas felt squeezed by their monthly loan payments, so Tri-Counties Bank home loan specialist Anna Poole and team looked to loosen things up. With suggestions from Anna, they were able to improve their credit scores to qualify for a refinancing solution that paid off their mortgage, car loan, and credit cards with a new lower rate reduced term home loan, cutting years off the original mortgage and lowering monthly payments by several hundred dollars. Height squeeze solved. For personalized problem solving, switch to Tri-Counties Bank. Service with solutions. Sereno Group is committed to giving you the very best service when buying or selling a home, but we're also committed to giving back to the communities we serve. We are encouraged to see the good and uphold it. Sereno Group has pledged to give 1% of our gross commissions to charitable and community groups making a positive difference. Sereno Group has donated more than $2 million to these groups since the inception of the 1% for Good program in 2012. Go to our website to see the list of recipients. Sereno Group, our community is your community. Hi, I'm Kathleen Fazine in Palo Alto, and I'm proud to support high school athletes on the 49ers Cal High Sports Report. One Hit Away Foundation is the only nonprofit in the country dedicated to brain healing and brain health resulting from sports-related concussions. We help athletes get better quicker and learn the benefits of brain health. 
Don't ignore a possible brain injury that can get worse over time if left untreated. Call One Hit Away today and find out what we can do for you or go to our website at onehitaway.org. While today's sports culture focuses on concussion prevention and concussion recognition, One Hit Away focuses on brain healing and brain health resulting from sports-related concussions. 49ers Cal High Sports Report is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Block Construction, together building greatness. By Cupertino Electric, the company delivering power and possibilities and celebrating student-athletes making a positive impact. By the Rikus Center, where goals and dreams become a reality. And by Stanford Healthcare. We're back with another great opening week matchup with two teams coming together to remember a former Leland player. Pat Tillman played for the Chargers before eventually playing in the NFL and then leaving as an Army Ranger to fight in Afghanistan after 9-11. Tillman was killed in action. I talked with Pat after the Chargers won their CCS title game back in 1993. Got a great bunch of guys here. I'm going to miss them all. It's a good season. What about your game tonight? Uh, dominating one more time. Yeah, I didn't play all that well. The team played great. Friday night's Tillman Legacy Classic had special meaning this year. Pat's nephew, Ryan Garwood, is a wide receiver on the Wildcats team. He was just three years old when his uncle died. A game with lots of meaning. It's our South County Chrysler Game of the Week, and Robert was there. The Leland cheerleaders excited about opening night at Pat Tillman Stadium. The Chargers in charge early. Leland has an outstanding senior quarterback. Carson Yates takes the snap, splits through the line, and Carson is really fast. 65 yards, and Leland has a 6-0 first quarter lead. Los Gatos coming right back. Jack Lewis Miller rolling out and firing to Mitch Thompson for a Cats first down. But the Leland D comes up big as Parker Peterson is in the backfield to kill the Cats drive. Leland looking to extend its lead, and look at Yates. This guy is big time, and he dodges defenders on his way to a big game, but the Leland drive stalled. Later in the first, the Cats driving again. Patrick Benison running hard and carrying defenders for a Cats first down. Then in the second, five yards out, it's Ben Perinello who takes it in, and the Cats take a 7-6 lead. Later in the second quarter now, Yates dropping back, no one free, so he takes off again, and that was a good idea. That led to a Leland field goal and a 9-7 Chargers lead at the half. But the second half was all Los Gatos Wildcats, Ryan Garwood. Tough yards and a big gain. His Uncle Pat would be proud. A great run there. Benison then finishes the drive with this short touchdown run, and the Los Gatos Wildcats are up 14-9. Later in the third, Yost Gervin in at quarterback. Number 10 rolling right, tucks it in, and he's going to run a big gain for Gervin, 20 yards and a first down. And then hand it to Benison for his second touchdown of the game, and the Wildcats extend their lead to 21-9 in the third. Here's Perinello again with another Los Gatos touchdown run to make it 28-9, and then one more for the Cats as Los Gatos scores 28 unanswered points to win it. 35-9 was a final, a balanced running attack for the Cats. We talked with the team about the special opening night win right after the game. And here they are off an impressive opening night win, the Los Gatos Wildcats. Congratulations, guys. Right here with me, Ryan Garwood. Ryan, great game tonight. Congratulations on your game. Thank you. Ryan, talk about uh, this game and what it meant for you. Uh, playing for Pat, your uncle, who I know you were only three when he passed away, but a legend for everybody here. So he's just a great man, and he represents everything I want to be and everything I think a football player should be, and I think this team really captured that here tonight, and I'm so proud of every single one of you boys. Yeah. Very well said. Ethan Shopper here in the middle. Ethan, this was a good contest for you guys tonight. You were down at halftime, came back. Tell me what that was all about. Uh, well, we just worked on some things we needed to at halftime, and then um, we worked together came out fired up it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Trent Hughesby another senior on this team Trent these guys uh, did well tonight well, tell me what um, getting ready the preseason the the workouts you guys had over the summer and uh, Mark Crell and the coaching staff how they get you guys prepared uh, well we started out every morning in summer waking up at like 7 30 getting to school at 8 working for about two and a half hours and then we had our own little camp where we all bonded for about three days and it's all just been working up to this for the last about 300 days <laughs> You guys uh, slept overnight in the gym for three days yeah, and all that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A Los Gatos tradition. Yeah. All right, Los Gatos Wildcats, nice win tonight to start the season. Congratulations, guys. Take us out with a cheer. Yeah. It's our first water polo game.
game of the season as Saratoga gets hyped up to take on the visiting Half Moon Bay Cougars. We start with heavy Toga action. Watch Sarah Dowdy staying in possession as the Cougars try to peel the ball away. Dowdy making the first goal of the game for the Falcons. Grace Stewart with a long pass to Morgan Brune Jensen who fires it in the net. Falcons now up 3-0. We skip ahead to the third quarter. Toga leading 6 0, and it doesn't stop there. A pass from Madeline Stewart finds Emma for Dauber. She goes under, but comes right back up and scores for Toga. The Cougs fighting back. Julie Raffetto connects with Haley Watson. She's got a strong arm, and she sends the ball into the net to put the Cougars on the board. Into the fourth, Tess Hilbert to Casey Sorfleet with a perfect aim and sending the ball up and over defenders and the goalie to land it perfectly in the net. Cougs now trailing by eight. The Falcons close the game though as Ford Dauber finds Brune Jensen who nails it for Toga to win their first game of the season 13 to three an outstanding game for Brune Jensen leading all scores. Once again this season Lexus of Stevens Creek will present the volunteer award part of the Lexus of Stevens Creek commitment to promoting volunteerism. This week's Lexus of Stevens Creek volunteer award goes to Hannah Brownie from Presentation High School. Not only is Hannah a star athlete on the field hockey team, she's a star in her community. Hannah is a member of a teen conservation leadership program at a local aquarium. Logging over 300 hours in volunteer service, Hannah helps take care of marine life and voices her passion for ocean conservation as an exhibit guide. Hannah talks about why she feels it's so important to volunteer. Well, my school's motto is not words but deeds, and I really take that to heart. So I think it's very important to get out in my community and work to um, make the earth and the human population a better place to be amongst and to make society a better place. If I can help reduce pollution and make society a better place, then I think others can too. Coming up, San Benito heads to the coast to meet Terra Nova. And Austin Job and his Pioneer Mustangs battle Branham coming up next. Back at the NBC Sports Studio, and really, there's no more beautiful drive to a high school than the route over the hill and into the town of Pacifica, right on the ocean. And that's the drive taken by the Hollister Hay Balers this week to open up their season. That's right. You can stop at the fruit stand. Mm -hmm. Get, get some piece, cherries. Get a piece of pie. <laughs> it's wonderful. The Hollister Athletic Complex is being redone, so the Hay Balers will be on the road all season long. Terra Nova is coming off a fine season, making it all the way to the CCS Division III title game. The Tigers and Baylors meeting in Pacifica Friday night. A well-deserved honor for former Terra Nova head coach Bill Gray as the field is named in his honor. On to the game now. The Tigers strike on their first drive of the game. Jared Julian scrambles around the pocket, heaves it deep, and Chase McKnight is wide open and gone. 52 yards to the house as Nova takes a 7-0 lead. The Tigers were also making plays on special teams as Nathan Rios gets the ball and shows off his speed, spreading past defenders before being taken down inside the 25. That sets up Lane Curry, who takes the handoff, finds a hole in the senior back, turns on the Jets and goes 24 yards for the touchdown. Two-point conversion no good, and it's 13-0 Tigers after one. Terranova continues the air attack in the second. Julian connects with Mateo Jimenez, who makes the catch and sprints past two defenders all the way for the touchdown. The two-point conversion good, 21-0 Tigers. Still second quarter, and the Tigers were on the attack again. Julian steps up in the pocket and fires it deep to Jackson Kubal, who makes a nice catch for a big gain there just short of the end zone. But a few plays later, Julian finds Kubal in the end zone as Terranova takes a 28 to nothing lead at the half. Hollister would get on the board in the second. Michael McShane fakes the handoff, throws it down the middle to Steven Navarro, who walks in for the touchdown. But Terranova's offense was firing on all cylinders all night long. Julian scrambles all around the backfield, buying time, and finally throws a dart to a wide-open Nathan Rios for the touchdown as Terranova cruises. 49-14 was the final, a huge game for Julian with four passing touchdowns. The Pioneer Mustangs looking to get their first win of the season as they take on the visiting Branham Bruins. We start off in the second quarter with some Mustang action. QB Austin Joe fakes the handoff, rolls right and spots a wide open Gavin McDonald at the 39 yard line and he rumbles all the way down to the five. Job handing it off to Edgar Valencia now, and he drives through the defense, somersaults into the end zone for a Mustang touchdown, 7-0 at the half. 
And we are back from the half. Mustangs in possession. A low snap is picked up by Valencia. It's almost like the Mustangs meant to do it. He shakes off one, shakes off two, shakes off three, and he is gone. A 65-yard touchdown run. It's now 13 to nothing Pioneer, but that's about to change. Bruin QB, Nick Bandanza, hands it off to Henry Wright, breaking to the right and into the red zone before getting pushed out of bounds. But Brandon keeps on going, Bandanza to Cameron Reinhardt. He stays on his feet and gets through the defense to just barely making it in, knocking over the pylon to break the plane. Still in the third, it's all Mustangs from here, Job. Throws a deep one to Devontae Matthew. He brings it home for the Mustangs, giving the Pioneers the 14-point lead. Fourth quarter now, Job hands it off to Chris Custer. He breaks through traffic for the touchdown. PAT is good, and it's 27-6 Pioneer, and that would be the final. Pioneer takes their first game of the season. A great night for Job with 305 passing yards. Get it, Austin Job. This little guy welcoming his favorite team, the Coronelette Cougars, to the court. First set in Monta Vista in the far court. They're in charge early. Carly McPherson to Grace Wishpard for the kill. She's a freshman and really good. So in the first, Coronelette goes Maya Hank to Catherine Helgeson, who bump sets Ava Merton. And Ava is just a sophomore. Lots of good young talent in this one. But the Mustangs in control. Hannah Choi gets it to Izzy Strand, who pushes it home. Late in the first now is Ashley Schwilke. Gets it to Strand. A nice back set to Wishpard, who rips it home. Must Mustangs take the first. Second set as Karana Lett battles back. Helgeson to Hank and over to Merton and that was tough to stop. Later in the second, the Cougars in control as Hank quick sets Julia Haggerty, another sophomore, and she just crushes it. Still on a run in the second, Helgeson goes to Angela Addis, another sophomore who sets Haggerty, who gets way up for the kill. Second set goes to Karana Lett. Tied at one apiece, Monta Vista's Choi with a great dig, Strand to Wishpard, and the Mustangs have the lead in the third, but Karana Lett battles back. On the double block, Shelby Bryant and Haggerty put up a wall. Set point in the third, Hangelson to Hank over to Merton off the block. Karana Lett takes a two sets to one lead. Fourth set now, more Cougars as Hank goes outside to Bryant, who tools it off the block. And one more time, Hank to Merton for the kill. Ava leading both teams with 16 kills in the match as Karana Lett wins it in four. The Cougars very impressive with Merton, Haggerty, and Hank leading the way. Remember, you can buy the entire game from the games we showed tonight on either DVD or we'll send it to you digitally. Go to 49erscalhighsports.com to order. Be sure to follow us on social media at 49erscalhigh on Twitter and on Instagram. Give us a thumbs up on Facebook. And remember, every highlight and every feature you see tonight will be uploaded to our YouTube page. So subscribe and we'll let you know when those videos are ready to watch. Coming up, our second block construction blockbuster game as Marin Catholic meets McClymans. And we'll bring you boys water polo as Saratoga takes on Half Moon Bay next. difference between possible and impossible? It's a person who believes they can, surrounded and supported by others, by us, who believe it too. U.S. Bank, the power of possible. Here it is, the final summer clearance event is here. New cars for less. New 18 Ram 4 Doors Eco Diesel, over 18,000 off. New Ram Pro City Cargo Vans, as low as 16,888. Brand new. Check out the new Body 019 Ram here in our showroom. Come check these out and save over 10,000 off on select lines. All remaining 017 cap chassis, $10,000 dealer discount while they last. Wow, why buy you? We're South County of Gilroy, your number one volume dealer in all of Northern California. The Rikus Center has long been a staple of the Bay Area sports community, offering flexible and adaptable training programs for all ages. Among their most advanced programs is Cornerstone, a training course that combines a group-style training session with one-on-one -on -one supervision to optimize the training of its most elite athletes. Beginning each session with a group-based training workout, Cornerstone offers the best of both worlds. Fluid dynamic sessions followed by routine, all the while being assisted by the center's certified coaches. The McClymouth Warriors have established themselves as one of the very best programs in the state, winning back-to-back -back state titles and looking to get there again. 
That's right. Marin Catholic made it to the NorCal Finals last season, and after suffering an opening week loss to Camp Alindo, the Wildcats were hungry for a win at McClyman's Friday night. The game is our second block instruction blockbuster game, and our Austin Manili was there. North Bay Sports coverage is brought to you by South County Chrysler of Marin. Blockbuster game. Yeah. Tonight's game features two defending championship squads who look to start off the new season on a high note. Now, last year, the Marin Catholic Wildcats were crowned the NCS D3 champions, while the McClyman's Warriors were crowned the Division 5 state champions. But it's going to be a whole new ball game. Gavin Cook will be under center for the Wildcats, who is coming off a four touchdown performance in last week's game against Camp Alindo. While the very talented senior running back, Jamar Julian, will be starting in the backfield for the Warriors. Two high powered squads go head to head in this week's block instruction blockbuster game. This is the very first play on McClyman's first drive. Hey, Robert Aubrey, check this out. I think you'll like this. Spencer Lauer with the one-handed interception. Amazing. But on the very next drive, here comes Mark Hodging with the sack. Kaboom. If y'all like defense, then this is the game to watch because that's what it was all about in the first quarter. A few plays later, Samaj Sims comes in for his own sack to force a three and out. Then as McClyman's takes possession, Addy Anderson on the sweep handoff, and he finds a hole. Turn on the Jets, Addy. This run sets up McClyman's for good field position inside the 30. Warriors keep on rolling. Then at the goal line, Keon Green steps back to Monte Smith, and he'll add some spin -a to this one and dives for the pylon as Mack gets on the board first. As we move ahead into the second quarter, Marin Catholic showing off the coverage. Kikioa Garrido picks this one off, but the Wildcats would not score. A few minutes left before the half, Green hands it off to Jamar Julian, who says, Excuse me, coming through. I'm going towards the end zone. Mack leads 14-0. Warriors would then come out even more dangerous in the second half. Montrell Smith sacks the quarterback. Nine sacks were made in this entire game. Very next possession, McClyman's looking to add on some more. But this one is deflected off a receiver and lands in the hands of Von Materer for the Wildcats' third interception in this one. Into the final quarter of play. Keon Green over the middle to Monte Smith and making it look like his hands are made of glue and brings this one down. Very next play, Caleb Anderson thinks he can one-up his buddy Smith with this grab where he flips over into the end zone as the Warriors are now dominating. And on this play is the reason why defense wins championships. Monte Smith on the forced fumble. Isley Cassidy picks up the loose ball, takes this one back, and that's another McClyman's touchdown. The Warriors take this one with pure defensive heart, so we caught up with Smith about how his team continues to succeed. Honestly, it's the practices we got here. We work hard every day, Monday through Fridays. Man, hard work's at practice, and being humble out here, and move on to the next game. In Oakland for the Blockbuster Game, I'm Austin Manili, 49ers Cal High Sports Report. The Half Moon Bay Cougars traveling down 280 to take on the Saratoga Falcons Thursday night. The Cougs with the first goal of the game, Keith Shuttle sees Andre Santos in front of the goal and he makes the shot for the Cougs. Half Moon Bay would go up by two goals in the first, but Saratoga answers with Nima, Amin Zeta, to Bijan Naimi, to Sean O, and he knocks it in to put Toga on the board. Check out the smile on Toga's Nick Bray in this play. This goalie is relentless, but HMP's Nico Simrock would eventually score 6-1 Cougars. Sue Jigger here with the assist. He tosses the ball to Nate Feeks, who tips it in to give Half Moon Bay the six-point advantage. Saratoga still growing strong. Brian True to Grant Chen, who sends a rocket into the back of the net. No stopping that one as the Falcons trail by nine, but the streak ends there. Andrew Vanna to Feeks, who tips the ball in yet again for the Cougars to close this one out 16 to six, and the Cougars walk away with their first win of the season, a great game for Feeks and Santos. Each week, the Harker School will celebrate their pursuit of academic excellence with the Scholar Athlete Award. This week, we honor Mount Eden volleyball star, Caitlin Vu. Caitlin is not only great on the court, but she's great in the classroom with a 4.0 GPA. Brought to you by the Harker School, this week, Harker kicked off the celebration of its 125th anniversary, the celebration including reintroducing the Harker Concert Series and Harker Speaker Series, both open to the public. There are also a series of fun events, including a gala in early 2019, also open to the public. 
All events will be held in the new Rothschild Performing Arts Center and new Athletic Center. At Harker, preschool through 12th grade students discover their passions. Learn more at harker.org. Each week, Adobe brings us a tip on how to use great Adobe products to improve your highlight reel or team video. Here's this week's Adobe tip. Instead of having a still picture as part of your video, here's how you can give that picture a gentle motion to add more appeal. Place the picture on your timeline, then in the Effect Control tab, scrub the scale percentage to the size of the picture where you want it to start. This creates a diamond that you will move over to the start of the clip. Then scrub to the percentage where you want the picture to stop. Move this new diamond to the end of the clip. The picture will then move gently through the scene. Coming up, Miramani takes on Hillsdale. But first, here's our Cupertino Electric Top 10 Football Power Rankings. Forty Niners Cal High Sports Report is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Tri Counties Bank, service with solutions. Twelve locations now open in the Bay Area. By South County Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat. Drive a little, save a lot. By DGDG.com, where we want you to be a happy car buyer. And by the Sereno Group, here for good. Hi, Ed Graziani a founding member of the Serena Group. I'm proud to support high school sports on the 49er Cal High Sports Report. Hi, I'm Lucy Wiedemeyer. And I'm Keith Andre. And we are both brokers with Serena Group. Many of you will remember legendary football coach Charlie Wiedemeyer, my husband, who was a champion of high school sports. And together, Keith and I support high school sports in our Bay Area. Off an opening night victory, the Miramani Matadors are looking forward to a fine season with junior quarterback A.J. Frazier having a nice game in their opener. And the Mats will head west for the game two of the season, taking on Hillsdale, the team coming off an 8-4 and four season last year, going to the second round of CCS. It's Miramonte and Hillsdale in San Mateo Friday night. In San Mateo now for this non-conference matchup between Miramonte and Hillsdale. First quarter, Miramonte already up 6-0, A.J. Frazier throwing a laser to Reed Callister for the 20 yard gain. And a few plays later, Fraser throws a crosser to Henry Vakakis, and he's gonna pick up some nice yardage after the catch. He stays inside the pylon for the Matador's second touchdown. Moving on to the second, the Matadors show no sign of slowing down. Fraser to Matt Meredith for another Matt TD to go up by 18. And a little over two minutes left in the half, the Matadors get the ball back Frazier throws it downfield to Keelan Stone, and he makes a diving catch for a 30-yard gain. The Mats capped off the drive with another touchdown. Watch as Tyler Lowe stomps into the end zone, and he gets pretty high thanks to his captain, Zach Barker. Miramonte leads it 32 to nothing. Hillsdale's following drive, the Knights go to the passing game, but Stone with the interception. At least that's what the refs ruled, wink, wink. Two minutes left in the game. It's 38-0 Matadors. They're going for more. Frazier finds Tanner Zwallen, and that was a beautiful pass, but Hillsdale keeps fighting to the very end. J.P. Lasenko hands it off to Nathan Iskander, and it looks like a big mess in there, but there is Iskander breaking through the line and into the end zone for the Fighting Knights' first score of the game. Just in the nick of time, but this one belonged to Miramonte. Matt's win it 38-6 to improve to 2-0 on the season. The St. Francis field hockey team is always tough and looking good as they get set for this season. The Lancers meeting up with Shanberries from 99.7 now at the Rika Center to talk about it. Hey, we're at the Rika Center, the premier training facility on the peninsula where goals are achieved. Hey, it's Shan here at the Rika Center in Menlo Park with the ladies of St. Francis. <laughs> Got the field hockey team in the house. Eliza, tell us about your goals for this year during your field hockey tournament. So our first goal for the season is to win CCS. Um, so that one will we're going to be working towards it all season. And then our second goal is to score in the first 10 minutes of every game. And someone told me that that actually happened yeah. today. We yeah. had our first scrimmage today, and we did score in the first 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. I'm rooting for you guys. Let's go over to Dora. So tell us about some key words and terms that is important to your team and why it's important. So in the beginning of the season, we all suggested four words each, and we narrowed them down to be our main focuses of determination, focus, grit, and effort. 
So how do you how do you kind of inspire the younger generation, like the freshmen, sophomore that look up to you? How do you take that on? Because that's a big role. At the beginning of the season, we definitely play with all of them and we play as a team. And basically we bring out our best effort in each one of us to help them get better. And then in turn, they help us get better. Awesome, thank you so much. So let's go over to Lauren. What's your favorite uh, outside thing to do? Okay. Last year, we actually went on a hike with coaching in San Francisco, and we also do um, uh, team lunch, too. Awesome. What's your favorite thing to eat? <laughs> well, I always bring my own food, so I don't know what these kids She meals preps. Thank you so much, Lauren. I'm Shan from 99.7 Now. You can catch me every morning on Fernando and Greg and middays 10 to 2. Thank you so much, ladies of St. Francis. Take it away, Lancers! DGDG.com presents the Be Happy Play each week. This was a play in a game this week that made everybody happy. This week's Be Happy Play goes to the Homestead Mustangs, Indy Desmet with the diving dig and watch her celebrate as it falls on the other side of the court. Watch it again in slow-mo. As Indy celebrates, you should go to DGDG.com to find out how you can be a happy car buyer. Coming up, it's the Service by Medallion Play of the Week. Some great plays this week. We'll see who gets it. But first, here's this week's training tip by our good friends at the Rekka Center. Hi, I'm Andrew Havili. Today's training tip is actually a precursor to a squat. Let's say you have tight hips, have balance issues, core issues. This is a great exercise. So what Lauren's going to do is go down, reach for her toes, get the hamstring stretched, sit her butt down, eyes forward, and she's going to open up one hand, follow with her eyes, bring it back down, other side, Back down, both hands up, keeping your core engaged, squeeze on the way up. The winner of the Service by Medallion Play of the Week gets a hat, a backpack, and an invitation to our 49ers Prep End of the Season Awards Banquet right here at Levi Stadium. We'll show you some really good contenders and then award this week's Play of the Week. Play of the Week. First up, Leland's QB, Carson Yates. Gotta give some props to his lineman there. He was almost untouched to the end zone. Miramonte's Keelan Stone with a spectacular diving catch. Then it's Spencer Lauer from Marin Catholic. He comes up with a nice pick and by nice, I mean spectacular. But the play of the week goes home to our Be Happy Play winner, Indy Desmet with the dig and she could not have placed it any better. Indy, you are coming to the banquet, which is kind of a long ways from now, with this week's Play of the Week. That's the Play of the Week, and that's our 49ers Cal High Sports Report for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. Be sure to join us next week to meet the Lincoln football player playing this season with a heavy heart. We'll see you then.